These are 10 wisdoms from the book Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu that completely transformed my life and I'm hoping that by the end of this video, your life could also change for the better as well. Without further ado, let's get started. Teaching 1. If you want to be reborn, let your old self die. Now this is so true in that all of our outer world is a reflection of our day-to-day -day decision. In fact, it even reflects how we think about ourselves, how we view our challenges and how we overcome them. If we are still immersed in the old identity of the person who always fears of missing out, compares our progress to other people, looks outward for external validation, then that means that your habits will be congruent to the version of you who doesn't feel like a 10 out of 10. If you want to manifest a 10 out of 10 external reality, Reality, then every single part of you has to become congruent. Hence, your old self has to die in order for the best version of yourself to bloom. Once we let our pride, our analytical mind, and our skeptical view towards the world die with that identity, then we are now allowing ourselves to shift our paradigm that our old egoic self would have never otherwise been able to learn from. Which leads to teaching two, and that is. Thus the master travels all day long without leaving home. However splendid the view, she stays serenely in herself. In other words, if you have shiny object syndrome, you can still appreciate the opportunities, the success, the accolades, the validation that you think those things could fulfill you, but you're still anchored in your own light. See, the thing that happens when we are so drawn to the outer goal and we put them on such a high pedestal is that we lose our sense of self. We sacrifice our inherent worth to do anything to earn that kind of money to do anything to achieve that goal without even realizing that if we are able to improve the way we see ourselves, if we are able to let go of our old egoic self and rise into the present whole version of ourselves, then we don't have to leave our home in order to reach any goals. We don't have to sell our souls in order for us to attain something outside of us that we think will transform our life. Because at the end of the day, this also ties back to the concept of quantum shifting in that in order for your whole reality to shift it all starts with your subconscious belief and how you see yourself hence you don't have to leave this inner home for you to go out there to seek the praises to seek the wins the trophies the money the home but all of this is a reflection of you already feeling worthy of having these things so if you ever feel like you have to dim your own power in order for you to attain something that you think is so big work on increasing your self-worth by changing your beliefs about yourself work on your habits and your day-to-day -day routine to solidify that belief and therefore no matter how splendid the view is you are still serenely anchored in your own inner home which leads to teaching three and that is therefore the master takes action by letting things run its course he remains calm at the end as at the beginning and that is so true when you are going through any difficult life challenges there are times where you have to allow the universe to help you co-create the best solutions and the best thing you can do is allow the raging storm to stop before you try to take the next action. There are times where you're very infused in the situation and you are not able to take yourself out of the inner chaos that you are feeling right now. So in order for you to actually find the best solutions to any problem, you must allow all the chaos to slowly resolve itself. Do nothing by becoming the observer. Take yourself out of the problem and gain the third person's perspective. In fact, there was a good quote by Monk Yongi in that he says, once you are able to see the mountain, then you are no longer in the mountain. And that means that once you are able to take yourself completely out of the situation that you believe you cannot overcome, once you are able to see everything as the person who is not muddled up or entangled in a negative situation, then you are able to figure out all the best solutions that will serve your higher self. And that's what Lao Tzu means by allowing things to run its course. Be calm at the end as you are at the beginning. The minute that you observe that there is chaos, you must stay still. Stay anchored in your own inner knowing and that many, many things can solve itself out when you are in a calm and relaxed state. Teaching four, can you step back from your mind and thus understand all things? Your mind could actually be the greatest weapon to success or self-defeat. Your mind could be your greatest tool to an abundant life or the greatest tool to destroy your life. And this is what Eckhart Tolle says in the book Power of Now in that your mind could be a slave to you as long as you know how to conquer it. But once you become the slave of your mind, that's when your life actually falls apart because there's always going to be an egoic part of you that tries to hold 
your high self back. So the next time you experience analysis paralysis, you are comparing your life to other people, you feel like your problem is insurmountable and that there is no solution, then you must be able to take yourself out of your mental state and stay calm in your inner being. In fact, I know that this is an extreme case, but I've been watching a documentary of the 12 boys and his one soccer coach that was trapped in a cave called Tham Luang. And the reason why they all made it out alive in the end after 17 days is because the coach taught mindfulness to the kids. The coach taught the kids to actually find stillness within themselves, even though it was a very torturing situation. But the coach knew that the kids could get really frazzled and panic if they allowed their mind to take over their body. So they conquered their mind in the literal conditions, which I believe gave them the mental strength to be able to make it out of their life and literally every single member as well. And the most ironic thing about our society is that we are taught to understand things with our analytical mind. But did you know that most things could be understood when we step back from our analytical mind? When we step back from the cloudiness of thinking left, right, A, B, and we are just able to be present and have our own awareness of our surrounding, that's when we can really understand the unfolding of our life, the unfolding of why all the challenges were presented to us, and thus find the right solutions that our mind couldn't even comprehend if we were still continuing to operate from an egoic state. Teaching five, the more you know, the less you understand. And have you guys actually experienced this? The more you start to know of something, the more you just don't understand, but why though? And sometimes the best thing you can do is to not know too much. Okay, it's good to be aware of the things that are happening, but when you get emotionally invested and you're trying to understand with your logical analytical mind, why did this disaster happen? Why did this have to happen to my family member? Why do I have to go through this? All it brings you is suffering. If I want to understand why something is the way it is, then I channel that into things like business ideas or why this person succeeded. What are their strategies and how did they use their mindset to overcome their challenges. So my challenge today for you is, are you able to still be aware of some negativities that surround you, but refuse to understand why it's there? Refuse to understand or logically dissect every single thing because it is not worth your mental energy. And interestingly enough, once you start to succeed and all the stars in your life are starting to align, that's when all the why will unfold itself to you in the most miraculous way. Six, the Tao never does anything. Get through it, all things are done. Now, have you guys heard about the idea of the less you do, the more you manifest? The less action you take, the more things are aligned in your favor and you are able to actually receive more. This is so similar to the manifestation teaching where if you do nothing, then everything is created. And this teaching is not about sitting on the couch all day long and waiting for money to just arrive, but it's actually about aligning your frequency to match the ideal reality that you wish to create for yourself. And through it requires inspired action and those inspired action is taken from flow it's not taken from all the frantic hustling 24 7 but half of it is actually priming your mental state aligning your frequency and then the 20 percent of it is the execution when i first tried to conquer the big lanes i would put in a lot of effort in my stroke and that was me not trusting the process and thinking that i have to exert all the effort but as i got really exhausted i put in less effort in my stroke and i allowed myself to just be be present in the moment and prime my mental state to reach my goal. So if my goal says I want to reach 30 laps today, then already my body is primed to reach 30 laps. And therefore I effortlessly reach my goal through the act of non-doing by entering the flow state. And that's what Lao Tzu means by the Tao doesn't do anything, yet through it, all things are done. And you may also observe this in the same thing when you're creating art, when you're writing something creative, or when you're even crafting a speech. Of course, you are still taking action by writing the actual speech, doing the research, or executing the painting. But once you're in the flow state, your mind is not conquering you anymore. Therefore, you are not doing anymore. You are being. And through it, everything gets done. You're taking no action, but through the no action, which is the Wu Wei approach, everything is still done. Seven, if you realize that you have enough, you are truly rich. Now, how many of you can resonate with this statement? There are so many times where we still leave Instagram on, we still leave TikTok on, and we do this for a personal reason. We are using social media to either snoop through our acquaintance or relatives' lives, or we are using social media for other people to snoop through our lives, which is actually curated on our social feeds. So therefore, we never feel like we have enough, because if this person that I know has this thing and I don't have it, 
gonna feel behind. If you are able to sit with yourself at least for 10 days, no awareness of who's going on which trip, no awareness of who bought this property, no awareness of who is getting married, then would you actually really feel lacking? If you are sitting still by yourself and you observe, I have hands that are working, I have legs that are working, I have a brain that is functioning. And you know what's interesting is that every single time I give myself that one day of the week to go and do my swim, go to the beach, watch the sunset, go to a fine dining restaurant by myself, within two hours I already feel like, okay, this is enough, I miss doing my work. I really enjoy this moment at the fine dining, I really enjoy the sunset, I really enjoy the swim, but now I just really miss this whole process. And this is what the Tao means that if you feel like you have enough, then you are truly rich. Our life is like a hologram. It's like a collection of our feeling state, our vibration and our interpretation with the reality. Meaning that reality is mostly neutral, but how we assign our meaning to each thing is what creates the positive or negative feedback. So therefore, if you're able to assign every single positive meaning to your neutral life right now, everything is neutral. And the more positivity you assign to it, the more energy you have to spend your time wisely. And spending your time wisely means you're getting an investment of return. It Either through monetary gain, either through self-esteem increase, either through self-confidence. And trust me guys, when you're able to get to this state where you can spend less time in your mind comparing your life to other people, you are able to feel rich exactly for where you are. It's a happy, happy place to be in. Eight. If you realize that there is nothing lacking, then the whole world belongs to you. And this really ties back to the previous point in that, think about the monks where their life is very simple and mundane, but they actually do work hard. They wake up at like 3.45 a.m. and start meditating at 4 a.m. or something like that. Then they do their prayers and meditate for four or five hours and eat their first meal at like 9 or 10 a.m., right? And then they spend their days wiping out the leaves, building the temples and doing actual work. And if you look at it from an outside perspective, you may feel like like, oh my God, like this is actually a hard life to live. But in the monk's perspective, they chose that life and they're feeling whole and content within themselves because they are grounded in their rituals. Their rituals makes them a human of substance. And again, guys, it's all perspective. It's all point of view. So today I really try to remind myself that as much as it's great to aim for the next 1000 subscribers, the next 10,000 subscribers and the next earning and the next that, but this moment right now, I do have enough for where I am. I am healthy. I do have food to eat and I also have access to clean water, warm clothes in the winter. I have a roof over my head. So in this present moment, I am truly, truly wealthy. I really do have enough and therefore the whole world belongs to me. At least in this particular moment right now that I'm filming, the world belongs to me because I'm in a flow state and allowing myself to connect with you through this camera. So do you guys get it that in order for you to really feel whole, it's actually your decision to be present in this moment and realize that there is truly nothing lacking. Even sit in the meditative state for an hour and you will realize that once your mind is calm, once you are not looking outwards, once you are not peeping, okay, who's going on which holiday, who's getting engaged, who's buying this ring, you really have everything that you need with you at this current second. So imagine if you compound this practice one hour every day and you're feeling enough, like whole, the whole world belongs to you for one hour a day, every day for 365 days. How rich will your life be? How confident will you be to tackle all the challenges in this world when you know I have everything that I need to succeed? All the wisdom, the knowledge, the solution, the answer is all within me. Nine, knowing others is intelligence, but knowing yourself is true wisdom. Now, can you guys agree with me that if you go and apply for a job, it's very important for you to know who you are working with. And the more you know about their character, the more you can adapt to them, the more you can say things that makes them feel connected to you, the more gain you will receive. But at the end of the day, once you lose those connections, once you leave that job, is it more important for you to know others or is it more important for you to know yourself? What are your strengths and weaknesses in 2024? What do you find yourself always getting triggered by? See, the most interesting thing about life is that the older you get, the more your circle changes. Okay, you may keep in touch with a few friends from high school, but I guarantee you that if you are striving for the peak success, if you're always elevating yourself, you will always let people go and allow new people that resonate with you to enter your life. So therefore, as much as it's good for you to know all these people and their character traits for the time being, but the person who really sticks with you from start to end, is yourself. So if you are able to learn what you emotionally react to and then prevent that from happening and actually take a step back and observe yourself 
Okay, how have I really transformed from 2023? How much will this benefit your life in the long run? See, the very thing that attracts money, opportunities, people, leverage, and connection is our ability to work with ourselves. It's our relationship with ourselves. It's our ability to position ourselves as the value adder. But before we can even do that, we actually have to understand what inherent value we have within us. And that's why I'm saying, instead of you having your personal TikTok, personal Instagram, and all these social media accounts that don't make you money, instead of you keeping those things for you to try and snoop through other people's business and get to know others, why don't you eliminate these things and use those time to get to know yourself. Connect with yourself when you do your swims. Connect with yourself as you meditate. Connect with yourself as you do your affirmations and learn what do I respond best to in 2024? How do I best overcome challenges in 2024? And how can I use this as my ultimate weapon for 2025 and onwards? And you will never ever dim your own power anymore to fit into places where you, your light doesn't belong. And finally, teaching 10. Do you have the patience to wait until your mud settles and the water is clear? In other words, do you have the patience to wait until you stop emotionally reacting, until you stop giving into your 3D reality, until all the inner chaos calms down and the water is clear? For example, this is not something that I'm really supposed to share, but after I shared a beautiful, physically intimate experience with somebody that I really, really love about three weeks ago, and right afterwards, he ghosted me for two weeks. If my mind was not clear, I would have been really drowning. Any typical girl would be drowning, right? But because my mud was already settled a while back, I've already done my internal healings and I've already evaluated that it is safe for me to do this. I have my life's mission and there was no way in hell where I was gonna compromise my internal state that will potentially affect my YouTube videos and affect my posting schedule and my video quality just to get upset about this thing. So I decided that no matter what I was seeing my outer reality, my YouTube channel has to maintain its quality and to make the process easier, I just have to be a happy person. Person. Can you guys agree that when you are in a great internal state, when you are feeling happy and stable within yourself, it's so much easier to succeed at your daily goals. It's so much easier to be in flow and feel at the right energy. And that was my number one priority in my life. There is no way I was gonna let anything pull me down anymore. But if I were to see that my mind was not settled, I would take all these frantic actions and follow up. Hey, where are you? What are you doing? How's everything? I care for you and all this and that. Actually, I did send one appreciation email, but I've always wanted to do that. But after that, because my mud was already clear, every single action that I took for myself was congruent to my best self. And therefore right now, I feel really good within myself. Now the point of me sharing this with you is that if your mud is not settled, don't take the action. Don't text him anything. Don't react. Don't blame anything. Just don't take action when you are feeling frazzled. Instead, allow your mind to settle. Allow the water to be clear before you take action from the best version of yourself. And this goes the same with if you are sad, don't work too hard yet. If you're not feeling good, don't take too much action because you're gonna strain yourself when the mud is not settled. When the mud is not settled, the more you step on it, the more dirtier things get. So let the mud settle. Let the water clear before you move forward. Life is not just about taking action. Life is about being, be in your present moment. If you don't wanna put your life's mission on pause, if you don't wanna put your work on pause, if you don't wanna compromise all the things you've already built for yourself because you're upset at a person, or because you're feeling down, then don't allow these things to affect you. Okay guys, these are the 10 wisdoms from the book Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu. I absolutely enjoyed talking about this with you. So if you guys like my video, feel free to subscribe and leave a comment down below to let me know what you guys like. Other than that, I'm excited to keep growing with you on this journey. So I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.